This show contains movie spoilers and swearing. And welcome back to another episode of Bite Size Cinema. I'm your host, RJ McCready, and for this episode, I have a very special guest coming onto the show or is joining me today is Alan Aopone, makeup artist. Um, he's been involved in many, many films, uh, some of them are to say uh, Friday the 13th, Part 3, Return of the Living Dead, um, Invaders of Not from Mars. Uh, he's been involved in the Marvel movies. Um, so, Al, welcome to the show. Thank you very much yeah. for coming on today. Pleasure to be here. Uh, so, how did you get into um, makeup effects? And well, <clears throat> sort of a, a strange story. My my uh, one of my best friends in junior high um, was uh, always wanted to be a makeup artist from the time he was like seven years old. He wanted to make monsters and stuff and so when i met him in junior high um he uh was always dabbling and playing around you know with with special makeup and stuff and i we had a group of friends in junior high and high school that um made movies on the weekends we just sort of fooled around i was never interested in going into the film film world i i thought i was going to end up in sports somewhere yeah um, uh, I wasn't good enough to play, although I love to play. Um, I always thought I would end up in a front office, something like that, something to do with sports. Anyway, um, uh, Doug White was was my buddy, and he um, used me as his guinea pig. I mean, he would try, I would be his model for all the things he wanted to try. And stuff that we did for movies, um, that we would make on the weekends and stuff like that. Like we did a, a an hour uh, movie of Mission Impossible. We all acted and we all did all the, you know, that we were all the crew and actors and everything. So, um, you know, everything that Doug was doing for like the face changes and stuff like that, I, you know, helped him do it. He taught me how to do stuff. It was very limited for what we were. We were in junior high and high school at the time. And and um, uh, so we just sort of, you know, went on with that. I always thought it was fun, but I never really took it seriously. Of all my friends uh, that I hung around with that were in that area, I had two groups of friends. I had my sports friends and I had my yeah. film and art friends. Um, you know, I was the least, I felt I was the least talented <laughs> artistically than, than all those guys. They were like all, all incredible, all just amazing, amazing artists. But, uh, but I had fun with it. And so cut two years later, we're at a high school. Doug and I are sharing an apartment together. Um, and he worked at a one job. I was working in the hobby craft industry. Yeah. Um, trying to break into some sort of sporting thing. But I was doing that. And while I was there, I met uh, one of the guys I worked with, who was my close friend at, the, at, at this company called Western Trimming. Uh, John, his his uncle was Tom Berman. Wow. Anyway, and I said, I know who Tom Berman is, Joe, because my buddy wants to be a special effects makeup artist. And he, you know, he, I, you know, we've seen all of Tom's movies and such, and I, you know, I knew different things. He goes, oh, he goes, how you want to go see a studio? And I said, I'd love to if I could bring my buddy because he'd really, really get a kick out of it. So uh, he arranged it. A few weeks later, we went to see Tom and we spent like two, two and a half hours at his studio just talking and Doug was showing him his book. And by him showing him his book, like I was in a lot of the pictures because I was either the model or an assistant helping him make stuff. So I was in the in the pictures as well. So we talked about you know the different things that Tom had done and his different movies and how he did stuff and at the end of the meeting Tom said listen I'm getting ready to start a movie and I actually need some extra help do you guys want a job <laughs> we're both stunned and we went 
well, we'd have to quit our jobs and give two weeks notice. Yeah. And he goes, that's great. We're not starting for a couple of weeks. We said, yeah, great. We'll do it. So we both quit our, ended up quitting our jobs and going to work for Tom in his lab. And um, I was like on the job training. I mean, I was, you know, learning stuff that I had only heard about and, you know, doing things that Doug was showing me in the beginning, but yeah. at a much higher level. So we both got an education on, you know, on what goes on in a, in a makeup lab. So we were doing that. And we're there for quite a few weeks. It was a movie called Prophecy. Oh, uh, I know the film. I know that film. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's the one with the yeah. bear, isn't it? The so, mutated bear, yeah. Yeah, mm. exactly, mm. exactly. So um, we're, you know, we're, um, building of it we're building the mutated bears we're building wow. the you know all the makeup effects which which there was a ton and uh, a lot of that stuff so we we're busy doing stuff and they originally were shooting up in vancouver yeah so um and it came time for them to take stuff to set they took stuff to set and tom and you know eddie enriquez and a few other people went up north to vancouver while we were still making stuff for them and then they came back and did a lot of stuff in Los Angeles. Like we all, a ton of stage work. We we're at Paramount and we were on uh, stage 15 and 16. And we had a lake and a little house and we had the bear, the full size bear was almost 10 feet tall. Wow. Um, and um, uh, uh, Kevin, whose new last name escapes me at the moment, was inside the, the big bear. Right. Really amazing suit worker, you know, actor. Yeah. Uh, Kevin did a lot of stuff. Um, he he passed on now, but but he was such a great guy. And then we had a smaller version of the bear for the miniature sets that they built to make the bear look bigger. Um, and um, all that stuff was shot over at Paramount on, like I said, on stages fifteen and sixteen. Yeah. And so one day, I came to work early. I always come to work early. I always get there early. And one day I'm there and I'm there about a half an hour before we start work, uh, you know, at, at Tom's lab. And he um, <clears throat> comes in and he says, hey, anybody else here? I said, no, just me and, and Charlie, the, the maintenance guy. And uh, he says, all right, well, grab some stuff. You're going to go with me to set. And I said, OK. And this is in the days before makeup effects was part of the makeup union. Mm -hmm. uh, Back then, it was it was a, you know it, you could do it if you were non-union. They'd just call you, and you were able to do it because it was a specialty. So I got to go to set, and so I just thought I was helping him carry stuff to uh, to the set. Of which at the set we had a forty-foot trailer that all of our equipment and stuff are, was in, and we stored the bears at night and stuff when they weren't being used and worked on them and stuff. So. Um, I brought stuff into the trailer uh, next to the soundstage and Tom said, listen, I have to go in and, and talk to the director and producers. I'll be back out. And I said, OK, so he goes, put this stuff away and I'll be out in a minute. Hmm. So he goes into the stage and I'm out putting his stuff away, it comes back about 20, 25 minutes later. And he says, hey, he says, I have to go back to the lab. I'm going to introduce you to the makeup guy and to the prop guy. Mm -hmm. He says, um, stay here. Anything that they need, you just get for them, okay? And I said, sure, not a problem. So he introduces me to them. It was Ron Schneider was the makeup artist, and Ray Mercer was the prop guy. And uh, so Tom leaves, and then during the day, they asked me for different things or asked me to help them with certain things. And I, and at this point, am so green. I'm like not mm -hmm. a makeup artist at all. Mm -hmm. I'm, you know, just really another set of hands. Tell me what to do. I'm happy to, to do it. So I'm just sort of helping them around anyway with different things that they ask for and stuff. At the end of the day, Tom comes back and he said, how'd it go today? And I said, I said, it seemed to go fine. I said, you know, I did the stuff that they asked me to do. And he goes, OK, great. And uh, he goes, OK, I'll be right back. And he goes inside to talk with people for his meetings and stuff, comes back out. And he says, I don't know what you did while, yeah. you know, you were in there, but they love you. And they, what? you know, I think I'm going to keep you here. You're going to be here for the show. So you'll be the liaison between the shop and the, and the set. And I said, OK, great. That's that's fantastic. I was really excited about that.
Wow. So while I was doing that, while we were shooting, mm -hmm. the makeup artist and I became really good friends because he was a sports guy. He, uh, his dad was actually Whitey Snyder, was Marilyn Monroe's makeup artist. Right. Okay. And Ron um, uh, was a, an athlete. He was a volleyball player. He played for UCLA and, and I believe was an alternate on the Olympics. Hmm. Um, I'm not sure of that, but but uh, I believe so. Anyway, um, uh, Ron said to me one day, he goes, you know, you got a lot of talent. He says, you should uh, you ever think about being a makeup artist. I said, no, 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 I don't want to do that. I, I want to be in sports. He goes, oh, this is, uh, he goes, you really do have some talent. You should give it some thought. I said, no, I said, I, I don't know that I want, you know, I'm not really artistic. He goes, no, you, you have a lot of talent. You need to learn some stuff. He goes, but you, you have some talent. And I said, I don't know. I don't think so. And then he said, well, it's a great way to meet women. And I said, <laughs> oh, okay, I'll try it. Yeah. <laughs> and that was actually, those words are what made me become a makeup artist. Oh, wow. And so he said, all right. He says, so you will take my call every day. You come in when I come in. And I will teach you stuff every day on the stand-ins. So for three months, I, you know, learned something every day yeah. on that show. You know, he would teach me different things and stuff. Anyway, so long story short, after at the end of that movie, when that movie ended, yep. you know, I was unemployed. There was nothing, you know, I didn't have a job to go to. So I just, we decided, okay, I'm just going to start looking for work, which I did. I didn't find anything right away. And then about two months after that, Ron called me and he says, hey, what are you doing? I said, nothing. I said, I'm looking for work. He goes, all right. He goes, I, I have something for you. Um, he goes, come on set in Pasadena. Come up and talk to me. Hmm. And so I did. I drove up to Pasadena to see him. He handed me a piece of paper with a phone number and a name. He says, here, call this guy. That's a job for you to do. And I said, oh, is this the makeup artist? He goes, no. That's the producer. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, I said, well, who's the makeup artist I'll be working with? He goes, you're the makeup artist. Oh, wow. I can't do this job, so I gave it to you. It's a non-union film. Mm -hmm. He goes, it's the producer I work for whenever, you know, I can. And I can't because I'm on this movie, so this is a perfect opportunity for you. And I said, Ron, I can't do I've never done makeup, you know, for a movie before. I've never done anything. He goes, you worked with me every day for almost three months. He goes, I know that he goes, I wouldn't give you this if I didn't think you could do it. And I said, okay. So I call the guy. I end up getting the job. You know, the guy said, you know, he goes, uh, he goes, all right. He goes, I can only pay you $1,500 or $1,400 a week. Mind you, I've just been getting like $400 a week. Wow. That's all I've been making. Oh, my goodness. And he goes, I can only pay you 1400 because I don't know you. Mm -hmm. and, you know, I, I'm not going to pay. I said, well, that's all right. After you work with me once, you can pay me more. So <laughs> so from back in the day, this is back in 76. Wow. I said, that, that was pretty astonishing. I mean, I, you know, and I'm, I, I, you know, I, I was just blown away. Yeah. And so the thing that killed me the most about that job was um, he goes, he goes, all right, so um You'll get the, uh, I'll send you a script and then we'll leave in in a week. We have a week prep in Macon, Georgia. And so it was a location job right off the bat. And uh, I said, okay, oh, you'll meet with the rest. Some of the crew is going to fly the same time you are and you'll get all the other paperwork and information then. And I said, great. So we get to the airport and meet everybody that we're on the plane and our production coordinator. And sitting next to me and I said, oh, hey, you know, no one ever told me who's directing this. Who's directing this? She goes, oh, John Huston. Wow. And I went, wait, <laughs> Maltese Falcon, John yeah. Huston? And she goes, yeah. And I went, and I just started to sweat. I was just like, I can't do this. I can't do this movie. There's no way I, I'm going to be found out. John Huston? No, I can't do this. Mm -hmm. But it ended up being, being uh, an amazing time. I ended up doing three projects with John and, um, uh, it was just the most amazing experience ever. Wow. So you've gone from, you know, wanting to be, I think I remember you saying something about the New York Yankees player to yeah. makeups. And then obviously the, the film Pro Prophecy, as you mentioned, which I like to say is actually a fan favorite um, amongst 
horror fans. Do you know what I mean? That, yep. that film still gets mentioned quite a lot on the podcast world. Um, my friend Ricky Morgan, who's a fellow podcaster, is a massive fan of that movie. Um, oh, yeah? I think I think it's just yeah. I think it's great. Uh, um, it, some of your earlier work or some of the earlier films are still um, favourites today. I've noticed that um, you've worked on Friday the 13th Part 3 and uh, Return of the Living Dead, which is a massive favourite movie of mine as well. Um, yeah. Could you tell yeah. me a little bit about what you did on that movie? Please. I did. I, you know, I did, I, I, I did stuff in the shop. I didn't. I wasn't on set for that. Yeah. I did stuff. Doug White was my business partner at, at uh, uh, Makeup and Effects Labs, um, was on set with that. Uh, Kenny Myers ran that show, and Kenny mm. was is really really close and good friend. And so Kenny uh, uh, asked us to build some stuff for the show that he because he was he built all, most of the stuff for that mm. and um, stuff that he jobbed out to us to build. And so I was working in the shop on on a lot of the side effects and stuff like that. Um, and Doug was on set with Kenny. So yeah, so that's you know, uh, you know that show the the time in the '80s when all those shows were being done yeah. was uh, was crazy. It was crazy, and we were we were fairly busy back then. Yeah, yeah. No, as I say, a lot of those movies are still uh, loved today. And then obviously moving forward, Al, I've not, I noticed. Uh, well, I can see that you, you you've been involved in the Marvel movies as well, which have done yep. amazing in the past like 10 years and um i know that you you've worked with samuel jackson quite a lot yeah in your career for a lot, yeah um, for like 15 years i was with sam what's it like working with Sam, uh, mr jackson is it i mean he, he seems like a really nice guy you know, and, you know he's everything you like. want him to be he is yeah. an amazing individual he's you know just so so himself i mean just so such a nice human being yeah you know um he he's amazing and he's damn funny too i bet he is yeah um what, what am, always good one of my favorite films of his is actually unbreakable yeah i love that movie and you know yeah, i like unbreakable too yeah I, I really like that i like that film they really did some really nice stuff in that movie and and sam was was just great in that and then, you know, in that, um, you know, one of the things that, you know, in working with Sam, Sam loves characters. So every time we did a movie, we decide how we, what we're going to do to change his look, you know, give yeah. him a different look, you know, be it a uh, prosthetic or non prosthetic. In that movie, obviously, the hair was a huge, huge part. Robert Louis Stevenson, who was Sam's hairdresser at the time, Robert and I worked together mm. uh, with Sam. Um, designed a really sort of Frederick Douglass type look to the hair. Robert designed it and, and was really happy. And then for his makeup look, one of the things that, you know, in talking to production, the production designers, the production designer and costumer is they had a separate color palette for Sam's character and for Bruce's character. Mm -hmm. So um, uh, Sam's characters, everything was sort of stallow. We linked to the yellow side. so. What I did was I created, I, I sallowed his makeup up. I made him a little bit more on that edge yeah. uh, so that he had those undertones. And I normally, I like when I would always keep Sam in warmer tones because he looks really good in a warmer tone. Yeah. And the thing that I did with him was I kept him in the sallow tones and then did a little uh, uh, contour and highlight to give him an edge, just to make that character just a little bit un unnerving when you mm -hmm. looked at him. Yeah. You know? So it was a lot of fun. And you know, Sam, whenever you know we would do stuff like I would Photoshop a look and show it to Sam. You know, once Robert and I designed what we were going to design, we do I'd Photoshop it, show it to Sam. He would put in his he would go, yeah, that's great. Or he'd go, hey, can we do this or whatever? And then we change that and stuff. And then we show it to the director and see what the director feels like and uh, would, you know, make any adjustments there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I, when I watch the film, because it's a favorite of mine, I, I see that Sam, um, Samuel Jackson does look different. He's got a very comic tone to him, which was yeah. what I think the director was trying to get. And, I, you know, that's, that's great work for his 
for yourself. And was it working with Sam? Is that what kind of linked you with the um, Marvel films? With yeah, him yeah, totally. Fury? Because yeah. the very first thing that we did with Marvel was the end of uh, Iron Man when they have you know they do that sort Mixed, of yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, a little yeah. bit at the end of the credits they yeah. give that little you know so that was the very first thing that we did and then we did a, a thing for we had a, a couple of scenes in Iron Man 2 yeah um, and then we went from that to I think we did a bit in Captain America mm -hmm. from that and then we did a bit in the first Thor yeah uh, for that and then we did Avengers and then on Avengers uh, I did Sam but I was also the assistant department head with uh, uh, John Blake right okay um, so and then you know from that just it just kept on going on and then I ended up doing Sam and Chris Evans because mm. I did Chris on on the Avengers wow and uh, Chris Evans uh, on Avengers so um, I ended up doing you know Sam and Chris Evans, and that from there I, I you know I department headed Iron Man three and was you know uh, so I ran that while uh, John Blake was doing Robert Downey Jr. So yeah. he was a personal on that, and I ran the show on Iron Man three, and then um, on the second of Avengers I did Sam and. Chris and uh, Don Cheadle. Right. Okay. Uh, and so it was. You know, I was. I. They kept me very, very busy. Sounds like it. Um, they're great films. So I imagine they were a lot of fun to work on as well, weren't they? Because you know. Oh, they're a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, the cast. I, I have to tell you, to, to have a cast, especially when you do the Avengers, mm. um, and you have everybody there. You know, Scarlet and Jeremy and you know and you know and just everybody it was just like and they all were so nice and they were all got along so well and had so much fun yeah um it was just a pleasure to, to be on those and I have to say you know Kevin Feige is probably one of my favorite favorite producers in the world yeah for what he does he does so much um uh and it's just you know, I'm I'm so in awe of his of what he does to bring those movies together. Yeah, sure. And what was it like trying to make uh, Nick Fury's eye patch? <laughs> well, I didn't make the patch itself. I just did the uh, the. It's really funny because originally in the very first one we did the three scratches. Oh right, yeah. And you know, which it's really funny if you watch the comic books. Originally, it was not just three scratches. It was you know. A blown, sort of a blown out eye. It was a lot more scarring. Yeah. And then later on, it switched to three scratches. Well, Sam didn't like the three scratches. I personally didn't like the three scratches. So when we did Avengers, we asked Joss Whedon if we could change to more of the original look, which was more of a more of more scarring, but you know, sort of tactfully done. Yeah. And um brought it up to Kevin and uh, they both said, yeah, sure, that, that, yeah, we can do that. So, so then Kevin's, or, or uh, Nick Fury's scar changed for, you know, for my whole period of doing it for, for that. Now they're back to the three scratches that, mm -hmm. that I'm not doing it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, and I, I personally can't stand it. The other thing I've got to mention as well, just coming away from the Marvel, because I can't mention Samuel Jackson without mentioning snakes on a plane. Oh my <laughs> god. <laughs> so. uh, what a fun movie. Yeah. Here's a really great story. Post show, we're doing press for Snakes on a Plane, right? Yeah. So I, it was Sam, and, and, and we're in the interview room, and the interviewer says, So, Sam Jackson, you've done all these movies, you list them off, made tons of money, da da da. Why would you do snakes on a plane? Yeah. And Sam just looks at him very casually and he says, Well, I know why I did snakes on a plane. Mm -hmm. I really love the original director who was involved in it, and I love the, the our director now. He goes, But I, I'm a fan of these types of movies and 
uh, I really, when I read the script, I said, I have to do this. So yeah. I know why I did it. It was, but it's snakes on a plane. Why are you even reviewing it? <laughs> oh, <dude. laughs> it was just like brilliant. It was brilliant. Yeah. You know what, Al? That just, that became a catchphrase. Yeah. Snakes on a plane. People said, "Oh, it's like snakes on a plane," and it just took yeah, off. Exactly. It did, it did. I think it did quite well as well. It, it, yeah, it didn't it, do it, bad. It didn't do bad. No. Uh, Dave Ellis, who directed it and who's passed on since too, right. was I. I I've worked with Dave a bunch as a as a um, uh, stunt coordinator. Yeah. And a second unit director, and uh, Dave was amazing. He had he was really good, and him and Sam got along really, really well. Hmm. So um, before, obviously, before I close the show here, Al, um, I need to mention your uh, makeup and effects laboratory to, uh, laboratories, uh, which is Mel, aka right. Mel. So it's important we talk about this because I know this is a big part of you and what you do. Um, so do you want to tell us a little bit about that? Well, makeup and effects laboratories. We I started this company. In the set in 1979, as just because there were when I started my shop, there were only five shops around mm -hmm. uh, that that were in existence, uh, and I felt like you know I told Doug, I said, Doug, we can do this. He goes, We can't do it. I said, Yeah, sure we can. I said, There's nobody that's servicing the non-union world, really. I said, We can fit into a niche, you know. Let's just see what we can do, and you know, we'll just try to get business and stuff. Yeah. Uh, had, I said, look, I had enough money to get a business license. We'll just, we'll just get going. So anyway, I met. We had many third partners uh, along the way. Our uh, first one was um, uh, uh, Steve Milton, and then, uh, and then we had uh, Frank, uh, Frank Carasoso, Frank Perez was a partner. Uh, Kenny Myers was associated for a long time, um, and then uh, John Pfeiffer was my most uh, you know was the, who had the most longevity with doug and i and then doug left and john and i brought in paul elliott who is now my partner my business partner and yeah. it's just the two of us now so um you know we've been we've done i mean if you look at our imdb page for the you know it's just like we've done so many things and been involved in so many yeah. very cool projects um uh uh, you know, it's just it's just been great, and just about everybody that today that has a shop today started here came came through uh, yeah. MEL. Um, you know, Howard Berger, who you know is one of the owners of KMB Effects, uh, and is a very very good friend. Um, you know, started here. Um, we had some great times. In fact, we just finished doing a movie together. He came in. I couldn't build the prosthetics for Mark Wahlberg on this last okay. movie that we did. So um, uh, Howard built them mm -hmm. uh, because Howard used to be Mark's makeup artist as well. Mm -hmm. And so Howard and I did the application of this of the makeups yeah. on on Mark, and it was so much fun because we hadn't worked together in so long. We just had a ball. It was it was just great. If you, again, you mentioned Mark Wahlberg. You worked with him, and I know that's a, a that's late, who I'm working with right now. That's yeah, my current. I know that's a, probably a current movie, which you can't talk about because I know it's. Yeah, <laughs> but that's not, not yet anyway. Okay, uh, well, thank you very much, Al, for coming on to the show today. I really appreciate it, and I've I've got I've, I've got a new uh, respect for you know makeup artists, and I, I look at that a little bit more closely now when I watch movies as well. Um, I hear you. So I hear with you. that appreciation, just before I close the show, though, I have to mention this because uh, is uh, there was a film you worked on back in the eighties called The Deadly Eyes. I think it was the rats. Oh my god! On, yeah. So you know, I've yeah. got to end. On, I've got to end on a good one, Al. You know what I mean? <laughs> I, I, you know what? That was that was so much fun. Yeah. Put four, forty dachshunds into rat costumes. Yes. <laughs> I love um, <laughs> and it was amazing how how good it actually worked um because when they ran they sort of waddled the suits because yeah. we put them in a suit with with foam latex heads yeah we removed the bottom jaw originally we had a bottom jaw on the foam latex head but we decided to remove the bottom jaw and use their lower jaw mm. the dog's lower jaw as the lower jaw and it worked out perfectly I'll so um it was a lot of fun we had uh, we had 
uh, uh, so much fun. Kenny Myers and I did that. Hmm. Um, we went up to Canada. We shot that, hmm. in, in, you know, in Toronto, and um, uh, it was just an amazing, amazing experience. Yeah. <laughs> I thought, I thought I'd mention that before we close the show out because uh, it's, it's a film that I remember when I was a kid and it actually scared me, actually. So there you go. You've done your job. <laughs> you, you, you did your job there for me. Excellent. <laughs> well, Al, there, there's, there's a lot more that you've been involved with, but I really appreciate your time coming on to the show today. Um, I think it's some excellent work that you're doing out there and um, may it continue. Um, so thank you very much. And... Um, um, my my listeners will appreciate what you, the stories that you've told as well today. So uh, thank you very much, Al. Um, my pleasure, Neil. And I, I'm always available to you, so uh, feel free. Yeah, absolutely. I might even do uh, you know another episode if if you don't mind. You know, to talk a little bit more about other stuff that you've been involved with. But um, yeah, thanks a lot, Al. Um, you got it. Now. So there you go, everybody. Hope you enjoyed that show just as much as I did. But um, before I close the show, we're going to do a little bit of admin. I am a proud member of the Legion Podcast Network, so please go and check out all the other episodes. And if you want to find Bite Size Cinema, you can find me on iTunes, Spotify, YouTube, several other players. If you uh, type in Bite Size Cinema Podcast, you'll find a player where you can listen to the show. Um, I'm active on Facebook, so if there's any movies you want me to review, just uh, that's the best place to contact me. And um, I'll be back soon with um, some new episodes for this month. Um, I've also got another interview coming up with uh, Mr. CJ Graham, a.k.a. Jason Voorhees from Friday the 13th Part 6, so I'm super excited about that, so that'll be coming soon. Um, so, as always, guys, keep it bite-sized, keep it safe, and I'll see you soon. enjoyed this show then make sure you check out the other great shows on the legion podcast network like cinema psyops cinema beef devour the podcast duncan and Bo come correct exploding heads horror movie podcast friday the 13th get slayed the hell ming power hour hello this is the doom show hero hero go show kill the cast underwater kaiju from outer space jerry hates action legion after dark metal health obsessive cinema discourse Pick Six Movies, the podcast by The Cemetery, the podcast on Haunted Hill, the Psycho Semantic Podcast, Rick Radio, House of Wax, Dude Looks Like the 80s, Rabbit and Red Radio, The Shadecast, Short Bus Cinema, Two Drink Minimum Commentaries, The VD Clinic, Who Will Survive Horror Podcast, and Witch vs. The Doomsday Clock. With such a widespread of shows, there is guaranteed to be a niche for you to fall in love with. Horror, politics, movies, books, sex, music, commentaries, health, video games, kaiju, action, news, comedy, and opinions that would most likely get you killed in some parts of the world. We are proud to bring you some of the best podcasting in the world. Check us out at www.legionpodcast.com, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, YouTube, and any other dark corner of the internet where podcasts can be found.